Sup everyone, welcome to another episode of Kuya Dev Tidbits Podcast, and I am Rem, I am your Kuya Dev, and today, let's discuss blockchain and cryptocurrencies. Sobrang sikat naman na siguro ng crypto, sobrang matunog, at Malamang nagkaroon ka ng interest. Ikaw mismo. Or, you know, kahit hindi man lang interest, narinig mo na siya. Kasi sobrang ingay talaga ng blockchain and cryptocurrencies. Malamang ikaw, nag invest ka na. Pero, for some of you na medyo hindi pa rin alam kung dapat nga ba silang mag-invest, in cryptocurrencies and blockchain let me help you make that decision but before anything else let me just say na this is not financial advice napaka importante niyan finance is something that's very personal and Financial decisions should be based on your personal situation. So, may kanya-kanya tayong sitwasyon. Iba-iba yan. Hindi tayo pare-pareho. So, I'm, go- I'm going to try to provide... Uh, I'm tra- I will try to provide you with some information na sana makatulong, but wag niyong ibase yung decision niyo solely on what I say. Kasi maaring you know, shaped by other factors or personal experiences yung sinasabi ko. So, keep that in mind. I know you're doing your own research. And if you're not, you should. Kahit anumang investment vehicle yan, stocks, crypto, real estate, do your own research, very extensive research, and make a decision based on your research and on your personal experiences and situation. So, medyo mahaba yun. Nililinaw lang natin yan kasi maraming, ano eh, maraming nasusunog, nasusunog sa mga investments, eh, lalo na sa crypto, na sobrang volatile niya. And dapat kung sisihin kayo, sisihin nyo sarili nyo kung sakaling masunog kayo. No? At sana hindi naman mangyari if you're making you know, the right decisions. But, but there's always that risk. So with that aside, let's go and discuss cryptocurrencies. So sa akin, um, I don't see I don't invest in cryptocurrencies because of the potential of, you know, 1,000 times growth. Mga ganon, yung 10x, 100x, 1,000x growth ng, ng investment. Although there's that possibility and, you know, I won't, I won't lie, hindi ako magsisinungaling na, ano, hindi, hindi naman tayong lolokohan dito. Of course, umaasa tayo na you know, some sometime down the road baka magbunga yung investment natin sa crypto but it's the 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 the, the financial part hindi masyadong maliit lang siya na parte ng laging uh, motivation ko to get into blockchains and cryptocurrencies Before ko discuss yung motivation ko, let me just uh, try ko na ilarawan sa inyo kung an- paano ko picture ang blockchain uh, ecosystem or environment currently. So sa tingin ko kasi, sa, sa na-research ko, na kahit pa paano, blockchain right now has 
is divided to some use cases. One use case is you know, cryptocurrency. Na yung, yung focus lang talaga nila is to replace fiat currencies as a medium of exchange. Diyan, papa, diyan papasok yung mga stable coins and, you know, the OG Bitcoin. Then, meron mga utility blockchain na hindi nila target na palitan yung fiat currencies na meron tayo. Like, you know, Ethereum. It's uh, it's aiming to create applications built on blockchain. You know, narinig nyo yan, smart contracts, saka, saka yung you know, uh, transactions on the blockchain. So, hindi sila cryptocurrency per se. Then, meron pang iba na yung purpose naman nila to glue everything, yung parang magiging bridge sila between between uh, different blockchains. Yung mga ganun din. And some, some like um, the internet computer or ICP or uh, meron pang isang kapareho niya na project. I forgot the name. Um, that they're taking what Ethereum is doing and th- taking it to the next level. Like, Ethereum kasi, it's, it's trying to create applications on the blockchain, pero yung front-end or yung UI, wala pa rin sa blockchain. Kumbaga, hosted pa rin sa mga sa mga cloud providers like AWS and Google. And even, you know, uh, in top three, uh, Azure, AWS, and Google. So, in that sense, medyo parang decentralized yung data mo, pero yung presentation mo ng data, hindi siya decentralized kasi ano pa rin siya, uh, kontrolado or may virtual monopoly ng three big players ng, na nabanggit natin, AWS, GCP, and Azure. So, ICP is trying to to take that further and do what virtually what Ethereum is currently doing right now and is it, it decentralized na pati yung user-facing side yung client side or yung front end mo na hindi mo na kailangan i-host sa cloud so yung back end mo which is the blockchain mismo pati na rin yung front end mo which is before ICP and other similar projects wasn't really possible so ayun yung feeling ko na na, na current na state ng blockchain ecosystem right now yung mga yung mga iba-ibang blockchain na yan and there's you know yung mga kalokohan yung mga meme coins na i won't even bother discussing kung gusto niyo mag-discuss mag, mag ano doon mag nag uh, tawag dito kung gusto niyo mag-invest doon bahala kayo but uh, there's high, very high risk of losing money there kasi sobrang speculative and meme coins don't usually don't have any intrinsic value. Wala silang mission. Kaya nga meme eh, di ba? Their mission or their purpose pur- purpose is to, to be memes. You no? Know? Although, medyo ano, may anomaly kasi uh, some big investors are, you know, taking meme coins up and it causes price action but I won't discuss that. So, Ganon. So, naging motivation ko is looking into blockchain's intrinsic value. And that's why I'm actually heavily invested in not really heavily invested kasi parang 
mga 5% lang ng investment portfolio ko nasa kanya. Investment portfolio as a whole, ah, kasama na mga stocks, uh, real, uh, real estate, and uh, rates, uh, REIT, and even other index funds. As, as a whole, 5% lang nun is allotted to cryptocurrency or blockchain. But in terms of my blockchain investments, heavily invested sila or malaking portion nun is nasa ICP. Because as a developer, I know, I, I understand the mission, what they're doing. Uh, they have other things that's going on behind the scenes and behind the, in, in the system na hindi ko na discuss dito. Do your own Again, do your own research na nagigets ko. Alam ko yung ginagawa nila. And I want to learn nga actually to build on the ICP. I just don't have the time. But since I'm a developer, I have an understanding of their mission and the pain point that they're trying to solve. Kasi, you know, as, de as a developer, I know that um, deploying on the cloud has its own headaches and risks. Although, sabi natin, medyo stable yan. Uh, distributed all, all around the world and all that, you know, shenanigans. Um, but, the problem is, tatatlo nga lang yung, ano, Tsaka may vendor lock-in pa, di ba? Para kung AWS ka nagde-deploy, you are at the mercy of AWS. As opposed to, kunwari, dineploy mo yung buong app mo into the blockchain, including the front-end, decentralized yung yung infrastructure mo, yung architecture mo. Virtu Actually, it's still the cloud but cloud on the blockchain parang ganun so when 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 i when i discovered that and when i really researched deep into the project i appreciated what they were ano yun, yung 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 ginagawa nila na appreciate ko so when when when, when i researched further I decided na, hey, this is the the project that that you know speaks to me, you know, or nakaka-relate ako. So, doon ako nagsimula mag-invest sa ICP. Old, pero before nung Ethereum pa lang, ay uh, ano na eh, nararamdaman ko na na ano yun, nung nagsisimula pa lang Ethereum, I was really tempted to to invest in Ethereum. Wala lang akong pera noon. So, this time, actually itong ICP, uh, ginawa nilang public this year lang. So, I had the, you know, the, the opportunity to, to invest and I had the fund. So, yeah, I, I, I went, I jumped uh, into, the, in, in, into the, uh, the project. You know, I bought some coins of ICP. And... Another another uh, reason why ICP or or how I uh, an another factor on how I choose the project that I invest in is the energy na kinakain ng or or that 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 the blockchain project uh, is requiring kasi hindi pare-pareho ng energy consumption niya mga yan. Like, Bitcoin, it's what they call proof of work. In which, doon nagagaling yung mining using uh, graphics or GPU farms. So, people use GPU farms to, mar uh, to mine Bitcoin. And, Habang parami ng parami ng mamay na Bitcoin, pahirap ng pangirap yung pagmamain. 
And, habang pahirap na pahirap yung pagmamain, palaki, laki, palaki ng palaki yung energy na kinakain ng mga mining farms na yan. And, personally, I'm being mindful of my carbon footprint. And I can't, and that, you know, yun, that, that philosophy, philosophy prevents me from investing into something na very unsustainable. So, yeah. Bitcoin was very tempting. But, um, it, it, it just eats a lot of energy. It's very unsustainable in terms of the, uh, the environmental impact. And uh, I, I can't support a project like that. Besides, Bitcoin currently doesn't have intrinsic value. I know people would, uh, would, would, well, that statement can, you know, can agitate a lot of people. I, un I understand. But I also, I also recognize naman na napakalaki na ng adoption ng Bitcoin. So it's not going to go away. So if you are into Bitcoin, I, don't, I, I can't fault you. Okay lang yan. As long as you know what you're doing. And as long as you know na why, why you are in, uh, into Bitcoin. Or why you believe in it. You know. Ako, personally, they say na, yun nga, Bitcoin should be, um, they say Bitcoin aims to, to replace fiat currency. But personally, I don't see that happening. Because the concept of currency is, it should be a means of Exchange, diba? Exchange of value. And kaya napaka-effective din kahit papano ng fiat currency. Kahit na, no? Kahit na binabati ko siya for being inflationary or bumababa yung, yung, yung value niya over time. It's, it's stable, relatively. For, you know, 99% of the time, it's very stable. Kumbaga, one dollar now or one peso now most will most probably be or more or less still one peso tomorrow. Hindi siya yung tipong 100 pesos now, bukas 50 pesos na. Tapos sa makalawa, bigla siya magiging 1,000 pesos. Tapos next week, one peso na lang siya. That's not something na ano na very stable for an economy, di ba? Parang ikaw, pagka binili sa yung isang bagay, ganito yung binili sa yung for, may nagbenta ka ng I don't know, uh, a camera, binili sa yung for fifty thousand pesos, but it was it was paid in Bitcoin. So yung fifty thousand pesos na yan, nasa yun na ah, in, in fifty thousand worth of Bitcoin. As bukas, 35,000 pesos na siya. So, yung instability na yun, ang hirap, ang hirap nun para sa mga businesses, actually, para sa lahat. Diba? Yung, yung sweldo mo, diba? Sweldo mo, parang, so sweldo ka ngayon, 50,000 pesos. Diba? This month, sumweldo ka ng 50,000 pesos. Yung yeah, sweldo, a 15, sabihin natin a 15, diba? A 15, 50,000 pesos. Tapos kinabukasan, yung sweldo mo is just worth 35,000 pesos na lang. Like, medyo nakaka, ano, nakaka taba yung, yung, yung wala yung stability na yun. So I don't think that Bitcoin will really solve that problem. Yung, yung, yung sinasabi niyang problema ng fiat. Fiat is doing its thing. Its thing. Kahit na ganun siya, kahit na, ano yun, kaya siyang i-manipulate in quotes. But, 
95 90 to 99% of the time it's stable, di ba? Bitcoin is so volatile that I don't think that it's it it should be used as a medium of exchange. But I do think na may ano siya, may may, may purpose ang Bitcoin. More of like uh I don't know, um a transfer of value like it could replace remittance services like Western Union na yung pag, pag transfer ng money from one country to another mas mabilis si Bitcoin doon at doon feeling ko natata- natatakot siya mga katulad ng Western Union kasi mas maliit yung transaction fee at mas mabilis pagka ginamit mo yung Bitcoin to do money transfers from any part of the world. Like, magkabilang dulo, di ba? Western Union, malaki yung porsyento nila dyan. And medyo matagal. Matagal yung proseso. And aside from that, Bitcoin is anonymous. Yung transfer ng, ng value na yon from one point of the world to another point of the world It can be, and most probably, it will be anonymous. So, dyan natatakot yung mga governments sa ganyan. Takot dyan yung governments and banks. Yung mga ganyan na mga bagay na, yun, hindi na sila kailangan. <laughs> Mamabay pa sila eh, di ba? Tapos hindi pa nila matrack kung saan nagagaling at sino yung nakakatanggap. Kasi nga, anonymous. So, yun ang tingin ko na magiging ultimate the value ng Bitcoin. Feeling ko, dun din dapat nila i-push yun eh. Hindi, wag nila lang ipilit yung, yung pagiging fiat killer niya. But, there's, nabasa ko nga nung sa isang tweet eh, and I, I agree, na there are blockchains that can replace fiat. And those are the what we call stable coins like USDT and i think Binance has all, uh, also has its own um uh, stable coin i agree dun sa nabasa kong tweet nakalimutan ko na kung sino yung nagtweet but uh, i just uh, read it na sila talaga yung maging game changer in terms of replacing fiat as a, as a medium of currency. Sila yon. But let's see kung mangyari nga. And you know, mar- alam mo naman, governments and uh, big players are very very resistant to these kind of ano, kinds of uh, disruptive na technology. So Medyo napapahaba na rin tong, tong episode but you know I I'd like you to to get that same train of thought in terms of investing not only in cryptocurrency but also in other in other investment vehicles na Wag niyo lang tingnan yung presyo. Wag niyo lang tingnan yung 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 hype. Dig deeper. Yung mga, tawag nila, mga candle-candle sticks. Okay. Yeah, yung, yung fundamental analysis, na ganyan, technical analysis. It's okay. Yeah, okay din yan. Importante rin yan. I don't know how important eh, sa, sa, sa cryptocurrency kasi sobrang unpredictable ng mga, ano, ng, 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 ng mga bagay-bagay dito. So, sobrang volatile. And it's, and it's still very young to really derive patterns na madali, na, na kayang i, ano? Sa tingin ko, ah, na kayang i, i-generalize into equations and into graphs. Sobrang feeling ko, di pa kaya. But, sige, okay din naman yan, eh. Okay din naman na pag-aralan yan and use them the price use price action and these graphs and Elliott waves 
pwede maging part siya ng research mo. But more importantly, figure out and research, dig deep into the intrinsic value ng project na pinapasukan mo. Or into the investment vehicle na pinapasukan mo. Especially, especially sa cryptocurrencies. Especially in blockchain. Kasi sobrang, ano pa rin ngayon eh, uh, sobrang aga, sobrang speculative pa, rin, pa, pa, pa lang yan. Like, yung pag-invest ko sa ICP, although I believe in, the pro- in their project, I know that there's a large, a large chance na sobrang mag-fail sila. Na pwedeng mawala yung pera ng pinasok ko. But I know, like, uh, aware ako na, 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 na may risk. And I'm, yun nga, yung I'm willing to take that risk. Na sakaling siguro 5-10 years from now, biglang mag-fold yung, yung company kasi na-realize nila or you know, nag-fail lang talaga yung company. Nag-try sila eh, nag-fail. Tapos nawala yung pera ko. I'll be okay with that. One, well, because I know yung naging mission nila and they tried. And I, you know, I believe them believe in them medyo ano lang, di ba? Medyo inalat lang, ganun. Hindi nangyari. It's very experimental and I know that it's experimental. And I knew the risks. So okay lang mawala yung pera. And besides, it's just part of my portfolio, a very small part of my portfolio. 4, 5%, no more than that. So it's money that I can afford to lose. Money that I can afford to speculate. So you, dear listener, yung nakikinig sa Kuya Dev Podcast, if you're curious about cryptocurrency, even if you're currently into cryptocurrencies now, please, please, ano lang, um, Do extensive research. Know the intrinsic value. And see, you know. And wag, wag kayo mag-all-in. Wag kayo mag-all-in sa crypto. Onti lang. Yung mga bariya nyo lang. Yung mga sobrang-sobra lang na kaya nito itapon. Sabi ko nga eh, parang minanalo na naman nung nakaraan sa loto eh. Parang 300 million, sole winner. Sobrang saya, di ba? Parang pa- para sa isang sa isang tumataya. But, ano yung odds na manalo ka sa loto? Sa ngayon, yung nga yung title nung ano, di ba? Nung, nung nitong podcast is, post, this podcast episode is, should, do I think people should invest into cryptocurrencies? Sa tingin ko, oo, yun nga. Yun yung sagot ko. Oo. Sa dinami-dami na sinabi ko, ang final na sagot ko is oo. Doon sa tanong na yun. But, kailangan isa-alang-alang lahat ng sinabi ko kanina. <laughs> Huwag kayong tatalon without, you know, without doing those things. And, you know, may relate ko ulit do sa loto. Feeling ko instead of, you know, spending 20, 50 pesos per month, or tuwing kailan ka nag, uh, tuwing kailan kayo tumataya sa loto, instead of doing that, maybe mas maganda ipasok nyo na lang sa, sa crypto market. You know, after doing that extensive research, ipasok nyo sa project na naniniwala kayo na dun sa mission nila, and the vision nila dun sa project na yon. And in their goals, kung naniniwala kayo, yung pantaya nyo sa loto or sa sweepstakes, pasok nyo lang doon. Pambili nyo na lang ng crypto tokens. Kung blockchain, uh, kung, kung bitcoin man yan, ethereum man yan, solana man yan, or even axi, yung maingay ngayon, or ICP, 
Kung naniniwala kayo doon, doon nyo lang ipasok. Then, isipin nyo na lang na natalo kayo. Hindi kayo nanalo sa loto, di ba? Isipin nyo na lang natalo kayo. Then, gawin nyo yun for the next 5, 10 years. Then, hopefully, hopefully, after 10 years, para na kayo nanalo sa loto. Di ba? Parang ganun lang yung gusto kong sigurong ano, i-impart sa inyo na nagawin. Oh, there are other techniques din na ginagawa yung iba like diversifying and there are also very good strategies. Basta yun nga, ni-research nyo lahat ng ginagawa nyo. At huwag nyo nga hayaang mag-invest kayo dahil lang bull market. Oh, diba? Bull market, tumataas dahil lang dahil lang sinabi ng kapitbahay nyo or sinabi ng kaibigan nyo. Be responsible for your own for your own financial decisions. Especially for speculative investment vehicles like cryptocurrencies and blockchain. And yeah, um, with that I'd like to thank you all for listening in today's episode. And I'll see you again next time on Kuya Dev Tidbits. Bye, guys.